Hi everybody, and welcome again to Your Cooking Coach with your cooking coach, Nicole Elevance. I'm here to share with you some very exciting techniques in the kitchen. Today, we're gonna to start a three-part series on roasting. On Weight Watchers, there's a number of ingredients that can be included in a meal that are delicious and zero points. And by adding just a little bit of oil and a little bit of spices, you've got an incredible side dish or a main dish that you'd like to consume. Uh, today we're going to talk about roasting. I want to tell you everything I learned, I learned from Barbara Kafka out of a book called Roasting. I highly recommend you look up this book. I'm going to try to highlight some recipes and ways and cooking techniques from Barbara's work. So today we're going to talk about roasting and we're going to bring two vegetables into play. We've got the winter squashes today, that's what we're utilizing. We've got a butternut squash and we've got an acorn squash or a, it's kind of a winter squash. I, now look at the shape of him. People a lot of times tell me that it's really hard to peel these, but it's not. You're not going to have a problem. You'll just start from the top and you'll go all the way down. With this one, you want to do the same kind of thing, but because you have these ridges in it, you'll want to use a small paring knife maybe to pop any of the pieces out, or after you've cut it open, if you see any piece of skin you want to remove, you just kind of cut it out that way. So we're going to get going. I've done a little prep work for you so you can see how it's done. So I want to show you. So here is one of the squash that looks like this, a winter squash that's ready for roasting. We're going to cut it up into pieces. And then I've also already cut up a butternut squash. Now I'm going to show you the size I've cut them. They're about a half an inch cubes. The reason I do a half an inch cube is it's going to cook quicker. I'm going to cut this one up in front of you because I'll be honest with you, this takes a little more fancy footwork. So basically I first cut it in circles. Looks like a piece of melon. Ha! Somebody took a bite out of it. But they didn't. And we're not going to yet either because it tastes kind of gross uh, raw. But what you do is you just simply slice it into pieces and then slice it again. What you're doing when you're roasting is you're actually uh, reducing the moisture in the food and by doing that it concentrates the flavor. So we're just concentrating the flavor in the squash and when we're done cutting it up we're going to have lots of little cubes that we're going to mix together. So we're done cutting. Isn't that incredible? We're all done. Hold on, I gotta get the guy who got away. Okay, so we're ready. So we've got our squash, and it's right here in the bowl, okay? Remember, none of this is points. So this is a zero-point bowl. I just want to, like, dive in and just eat the whole thing. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cook it. For this much squash, I usually do one tablespoon of oil, uh, olive oil, per squash. Now, I'm sure you're sitting there thinking to yourself, Nicole, my cooking coach, can I do it with just one tablespoon? Yes, you can. And let me tell you another secret. Maybe you don't want to add any oil at all. You don't have to. You can go ahead and just spray the heck out of it with Pam cooking spray, or I use high top. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to add some salt. Now you do this to taste. So we're putting about <clears throat> three quarters of a teaspoon in there of salt. I might add a little more because I do have two squashes, but maybe half a teaspoon of kosher salt per squash. And I just do it by squash because then you know how much you've got in there. And I also want to add, remember I told you, if you do not have fresh, go with dried sage. So that's what I've got here. And um, I'm going to put in, I'm putting about a tablespoon of dried sage in with my olive oil and with my salt. Maybe I'll throw a little, a little more in. There we go. And we're almost ready. We're going to give it a stir. Now, when you stir, you want to make sure you get all the mixture of all the spices mixed in with the squash. Now, the one thing I didn't do yet, which I'm going to do now, is I'm going to add some pepper. Now, I like fresh ground pepper. You can buy pepper in a little container like this. I prefer to grind my pepper, and I use a mill. Now, all we're going to do is we're going to now put this onto cookie sheets. Now, I use cookie sheets for two squashes. I use two cookie sheets. So, I've got two. They're a good size. One's a little crappier looking than the other. And all I do is I'm going to pour half of the squash onto one and half of the squash onto the other. Now I'm going to show you what I do. I give it the shake. I have like a patented shake that I do. And the reason I do this is so that the squash gets as much airflow around it as possible. I really think that's critical. You want to make sure that the vegetables are not crowded. If they're crowded on the cookie sheet, they're actually not going to brown as nicely and caramelize and be absolutely delicious. We're going to go into the oven at 500 degrees 
We're going to roast for five minutes. We're going to shake. We're going to roast for five minutes more. We're going to shake the pan again. Then we're going to let it roast for about 10 minutes and we'll see how it looks when we come out. Okay, so at the end of our roasting, we have an incredible roasted squash for you to use in a variety of ways in your kitchen. Here it is. It's in those beautiful little cubes. They're kind of squishy to the touch. And let me tell you, they're delicious. The total points that were put into this are six points. That's three, excuse me, six teaspoons of oil, about six points. And I have to tell you, it's well worth it. This is an incredible dish that you can add into a variety of your meals. Uh, we love to mix it with pasta. We use it as a side dish instead of rice or potatoes. We just eat it as a vegetable. And we're going to bring you a variety of other roasting ideas. We've got an upcoming program on roasted vegetables and then also roasted beets. So enjoy and have a great time in your kitchen. Remember, just because you're adding vegetables doesn't mean you're not adding flavor. We're bringing you both. Good eats to all. And remember, make it with me. It's going to turn out okay. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.